Hello, welcome back to Story Reckless. I'm Nathan and I'm the DM here and I use he him pronouns and we're an actual play live stream playing Descent into Avernus in D&D. Uh, yeah, let's do some quick intros and then jump right into it. I'm Claire, my pronouns are they, them, um, still Kadam, who's still a half elf, still a grave cleric, and now newly a werebore. Uh, my name is Olive. I use she and they pronouns. I am still playing Calliope, uh, as you see, old lady and discoverer of a different way to go around and avoid this stack of side quests. And I'm quite excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Enyo, they, them pronouns, and I am playing Pip, uh, an alchemist satyr who uh, likes to make problems. <laughs> or maybe doesn't like it but just does it oh well i enjoy it it's good times uh all right well with that um let's do a quick little recap and then jump right into it do you want um, announcements? oh yeah right yes uh yeah claire did you want to handle this one or i can do it sure okay <laughs> uh friday April 12th, we turn three. <laughs> we are solidly toddlers now. <laughs> and to celebrate our third anniversary, we are having a special one shot with completely new characters, completely unconnected from anything we're doing. And we are having to now love it, uh, who is a artist and artist and illustrator coming on and being a guest star with us. Uh, we're gonna post links to socials and chat. I have decided just now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but she's gonna be joining us. She has also done some special art for us for this one shot. I highly recommend jumping on at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Pacific Daylight Time, Pacific Time on Friday, right here on Twitch. Start does. Gosh, yes. Twitch. TV slash story reckless. If you're watching this, you probably know where we live on Twitch. Probably, probably know where probably. we live. Probably. Yeah. Probably. If you're on YouTube, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah. Um. Um Yeah. Uh I'm very excited to have Tanel. Uh I worked with I met and worked with Tanel uh over at Gen Con when I was uh DMing Dress to Quest. Uh, and she was awesome. And yeah, um, the uh, I've seen the artwork yet. Nobody else has. Um, and it, it, so looks, excited. it looks pretty great. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I, oh, uh, and um, I will say, uh, Enyo, since you, uh, I know you're traveling right now, I believe you're out and about. Um, Enyo won't <laughs> be able to make it on Friday, sadly. I'm very yeah. sad about that, but we're happy you're here today um, and that you will be here for next week. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, that is our little announcement. So please tune in and check it out. And it'll just be a unrelated one shot. So it should be fun. It's going to be cold. I've been promised cold. Yes, it will be cold. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Well, with that, we can do a quick uh, recap now and uh, get right back into it. So last we left off, uh, you all left the Wandering Emporium. Um, you did have one kind of uh, strange occurrence the evening, the time that you slept um, before leaving the Wandering Emporium. Uh, apparently... There's weather events in hell um, as a, a humid cloud of mist and fog came sweeping through the area. Uh, seems to happen, based on your conversation with the devils, Kadam, uh, seems to happen every once in a while. Um, humidity from the river sticks builds up to a point that this fog sweeps through. And uh, sadly, Calliope and Lulu uh, lost some of their memories in this event. Um, but Kadam going out and talking with some of the devils discovered what was happening and paid for a, a night's rest inside the Infernal Rapture <laughs> to get out of the humidity. 
and the fog. Uh, after having a lovely rest, you all set out to hopefully go right back to Red Ruth and finish the side quest. But this being hell, things took longer than expected. Uh, you bypassed uh, a, what appeared to be a battle between some demons and devils. And the drive went on for hours, uh, over a day's worth of driving, before eventually the little hand, you saw what it was pointing to, and it was not the bone brambles. It was instead pointing to a massive sword wedged in the hellish landscape with a equally massive helm cracked next to it. Uh, you decided to investigate, because why not? That's what the hand was pointing to. And upon approaching and checking it out, yeah, yeah, Gargalth, that's Gargalf. right. Gargalth. You can get him talking to. <laughs> no, you guys, it's this way, I promise. Um, you uh, approached this helm and discovered within a spined devil, uh, seemed to be rather low and pathetic within, and talking to them, discovered that they were someone named Uldrock, uh, a, I think Calliope determined could potentially have been some sort of titan um, that was cursed by Tiamat some time ago and has been dwelling within their old helm ever since. Um, yeah, so, uh, but talking to them, you found out they had a major grudge against <laughs> Tiamat. Um, revealed that this curse could be broken if they themselves spilled Tiamat's blood on the um, soil of Avernus. But it seemed like an impossible task. But with a little bit of pressing, you found out that uh, Uldrak knows that her champion contains a vial of her blood, a reliquary, a small vial of her blood around his <laughs> neck. You know. Sorry, is it a reliquary worth at least 100 gold? Maybe. <laughs> right, I can summon a different kind of celestial once I get a hold of that. Uh, um, so, with all that information in mind, you uh, have some decisions to make. Um, we'll pick up here. Uh, all of you, actually, uh, first off, I guess, let's let's check in with... Uh, Pip, Pip, you have been, um, Calliope and Kadam stepped out of the vehicles to go forward and talk to this being. You are back with the vehicles with Valor uh, in the Tormentor, you're in the Demon Grinder, um, and Lulu is fluttering over by Valor um, to kind of keep watching the vehicles, make sure nothing happens. But um, is there anything like that you want to be doing in this moment? You can see your friends about... 200 feet away, conversing with this pathetic little creature that's like crouched inside this massive helm. Can't really make out what they're saying, but they seem to be having a conversation. Uh, I think uh, Pip is talking, is chatting with Gargauf, okay. mostly um, about the, the helm and everything. Just like, well, you know about this. Uh, I think, do you think Pip knows enough to tell what the helm and sword is uh you, you can go ahead and make um an arcana check and see if you can kind of like get a gauge of what it is it would be that is what um if this is anything useful let's see what you got 13 uh yeah you're not entirely certain um i mean it's clearly giant of some kind um, the, due to the size, you might, you maybe suspect it's, uh, God, what are the really huge giants? I think they're storm giants. Um, which is odd, um, that there's, th that there's that down here in the hells. So yeah, you're, I don't think you're totally certain what, like what kind of creature this would have belonged to. Um, but yeah, what are you, uh, what are you saying to Gargal? I'm just, uh, asking like, so I saw this then, some kind of storm giant. Uh, I, I'm not entirely certain. 
I didn't know about this. It wasn't here when I was here. Ah, uh, but my sense is... Um... Remember how far out he can see? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't think he can actually see that far out. Uh, I'm gonna need You're to get useless, aren't you? You no. really don't know. I, look, it, it could be a number of things. It could very likely be something that belongs to some sort of celestial being. Those creatures sometimes venture down to these planes and die, or get leave their things behind. Well, Look, uh, I... Not all devils are able to get exactly where they're trying to go. That's just how this place works. Hmm. I guess I'll have to take your word for it until I can find a more useful devil, won't I? Yes. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> And I, I think it's just going to be uh, just sort of needling Gargouth for a while, trying to to get him to say something that is uh, that can be clearly be proven wrong by what the party comes back and <laughs> relays. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just like uh, poking and prodding him. Again, he just kind of reiterates that this, uh, based on your description... He's not entirely certain what it is. It could be something from a celestial being. Uh, likely, I think he does mention um, titans um, and creatures known as um, Imperiums uh, specifically, that it could potentially be something like that. Um, and that those creatures have been known to venture outside of their planes in acts of conquest or... Um, you know, uh, valiant efforts to prove something to their god, that kind of thing. So, uh, he he reveals that to you, but again, he, he ends it with, if I were to get a bit closer, then I could probably see it and maybe give you a bit more information. My senses are very limited due to this form that I find myself trapped in and due to the companions I find myself with. <laughs> Excuses. They're valid ones. And yet, here you remain. I yes, mean, how I'm, long, I'm, how long I'm, I'm literally I, I'm literally trapped in a shield. I, that, that is what has happened to me. Uh, and as you continue to, to argue with each other, <laughs> um we'll cut over to the two of you as you kind of get to the end of that conversation with uh, Uldrak making that reveal. Um, Uldrak seems to plop down in the dirt, a bit defeated, shoulders shrugged down, look, kind of pawing at the dirt in front of, uh, in front of him. Um, what, um, what do you, what do the two of you do? I, th I think Calliope is just kind of taken back on her heels. She's like, ah, Bell. Kima. Hmm. I could work with that. I could work with that. Maybe. Um, and I think unfolds Big Dummy. Just like puts down the bag. Mm -hmm. Undum Big Dummy kind of like climbs out of the bag of holding and inverts. Um, and Calliope pulls down the chalkboard <laughs> um, with the list of like side crests and stuff. Like, oh. And like starts looking up at it. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, if we intersect with Bell back here, we make a drop off of Moon Color. Hmm. Get more information, maybe from Red Root. Yeah, okay, this could work. Yeah. Hey, Old Rock. Yes. Wanna, wanna come with us to a bit of a heist? Possibly? I can't promise anything. I can't promise anything. But we might have a shot. We might have a shot here. No, just leave me here. I don't uh, want to be traveling around with... I would rather just sit here in my helm. And what? And For how long? what? I say in Celestial. Uh, he responds back in Celestial. Old Rock, 
wants to sit and think and reminisce on old times. And old truck one day, one day maybe old truck will find a way. Maybe old truck can is I tired. Cast calm emotions? You can try. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna cast calm emotions on, I guess. Well, not just him. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, what kind of save is that? I believe that's wisdom. Wisdom? Okay. No, charisma. Charisma. Okay. Oh, no, he's not a humanoid. No, definitely not. Definitely not. Never mind. You can calm a motion with your words. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> <laughs> Old Ruck, why are you afraid of succeeding? Old Ruck isn't afraid of success. Is Old Ruck afraid? I think you are. Otherwise, you wouldn't have spent so much time hiding in here. When Old Ruck was defeated, it was horrible sad day the pain that Uldrak felt was unbearable the shame that Uldrak brought brought down upon him and all that he stood for and all the glory that Uldrak was trying to achieve for Gr Grolantor Oh, old Rock cannot bear it to experience that again. Besides, it seems like you never left. Like you never left that state. I, I've left that state. I've, I plot every day. Every day I plot. I plot for a way out of here. I know. I've told you, the champion with the blood. All I need is the blood. Yeah, come on, we're gonna go get it. You're going to confront the champion? We'll figure something out on the way. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a trail. How could I possibly aid you in my pitiful state? Do you not you see can... what I look like? Do you not I, see I what I... Look at these puny little hands I take that puny little hand <laughs> you are a lot more impressive than most people I know visually at least why don't you come with us and we will discuss plans on the way go ahead and make a persuasion roll for me alright can um... Clyde give advantage by saying do it you coward <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sure. <laughs> Peer pressure, baby. Dirty 20. <clears throat> this puny little spine devil, <laughs> uh, which you are realizing because you've interacted with these creatures before. He is, uh, I guess, in, for your limited knowledge of these creatures, is on the smaller side of the ones you've seen okay. um uh you hold his hand and um it's kind of uncomfortable it's a rough texture it's like very uh there's no like hard barbs or spines on the hand itself but it's very rough and pointy That's and this bad. little hand is in yours and uh old rock slowly looks up at you 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 really think I could help? Yeah. Oh. Old Rock. Old Rock will restore his old form with his new friends. Oh. Very well. I will come with you. 
And if we are indeed going to confront Tiamat's champion, I think you should take that. And he points up at the giant sword. And you realize he's pointing specifically at the pommel where the gem is embedded in it. I think that will help you immensely. It will help all of us. I... When Old Rock was defeated, he lost the ability to even touch that thing. How high up is it? Uh, let's say the sword is, it's like a great sword, so it's like 15 feet, and it's wedged into the ground, so it's probably like 12 feet up. All right, can I misty step to the top of it? Oh, uh, yeah, I will say make, make an acrobatics check, because you're going to be like on the pommel, which is like kind of rounded, so it's not the most, you know, flat, like, easy surface to like, poof, okay. land on. <laughs> Natural 20. Oh, yeah. Like, just <laughs> so easy. <laughs> um, you find yourself on, on top of the pommel. Well, yeah, what does that look like for Gadam? Is it just... Uh, I think I don't think about it at all. Uh -huh. Like, sure, I can get up there. No problem. There I am. It, is it a little slippery? Maybe. We're not paying attention to that right now. We have a job to do, and I want to get going. I want to accomplish something today. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you land up there and um, you see this gem, this like, it's it's more like a, it's like a very spherical uh, red, like almost like a crystal ball-esque um, uh, gem that's embedded in the um, pommel. I think it's kind of trying to think of how, it's held in some way right like some kind of metal band it's like holding it in there um mm -hmm. but you could certainly try and pop it out yeah okay uh, i think Clippy calls up honestly i was thinking we could just take the whole sword i got chain we could just put it up top I mean, we're gonna need the sword anyway to cut those chains well Yes, I thought it might give us a, a way. Like, um, here comes the old rock. I, I don't know though. That's, it's a hella metal sword. It's yeah. gonna be so sick. I mean, yes, it it would it would. <laughs> One second, I'm just gonna try and pop it out. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh. It it takes time and effort okay. but you can eventually get it out um you, if you i'm gonna say there's no like time pressure here so it just it just takes time um you're able to eventually pop it out um and it kind of foop, comes out and you're able to sort of grab it with your hand as it uh rolls out into your hand um and it is you know decently sized as you're holding on to it um probably like a little smaller than a soccer ball kind of size um about the size of a head might you say uh maybe about yeah like yeah sure let's say that great i'll uh, pop it in my bag yeah easy enough um as you're holding it though you you do feel like um uh like a warmth to it um as it rests in your hand uh, and yeah, you can easy enough foop, slip it into your bag. What, what's the gem do? I, I think Calliope says while Kadam's up top, just like looking at it. Oh yeah, sure. Um, Uldrak uh, has been watching Kadam the whole time and um, you see his eyes kind of start to almost stare off again into the far distance as he, uh, as you ask this, oh, the gem. Oh, once the gem gave Uldrak the power to command dragons. And then slowly looks back to you. But Uldrak no longer has that power. We'll get it here. That seems good. That seems good. Okay. 
<laughs> Claris. Yes. Um, and uh, Uldrak, uh Yeah, so so Kadam, you have the gem. And uh, are you just going to climb down? Are you going to misty step down? Uh, I will kind of skitter my way down the blade if that seems doable. Sure. Um, I will say for this, go ahead and just make an ac- athletics check for me to climb down. Not terribly hard, but... Five. Five. Okay, you get about halfway down um, and sort of slip and are trying to like gracefully drop down onto the earth. You're probably, you know, maybe a little uh, like eight feet up. Um, And unfortunately, as you fall, you kind of hit a little hard, uh, taking just a little bit of damage. I will. Two points of damage. Sorry, as, as Kadam falls, I will use Feather Fall. (laughs) <laughs> okay, okay. So you, do, you do not take two points of damage. You um, float down. I think, I think specifically Calliope's kind of like waiting at the bottom of them, like ready, like with like some chains and stuff, uh-huh. like in like a big dummy's mouth too. Being like, okay, okay. What? And like was ready with this follow-up levitate um, on the great sword oh. to kind of help get it up out of the ground. Are you casting yeah. Levitate on the sword? I am casting Levitate on the sword and then How pitching have... it to Big Dummy to pull it out. 500 pounds. 500 pounds. A normal great sword is 6 pounds. Okay. So I was yeah. figuring even like... It, it's probably, yeah, under 500 then, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like 100 times bigger is like in the right realm. And I don't okay. think it's 100 times bigger. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay, so um, you cast Feather Fall on Kadam as uh, they drift to the ground, yeah. and then you cast Ooh. Levitate on the sword, Ooh. and it, for a moment, kind of... And, like, it hitched to Big Dummy, I think, um, and, like, Big Dummy's kind of, like, pulling it, like a, a tractor would pull a stump out okay. of the uh, but the sword levitates above the ground and Big Dummy strains, pulling it. I mean, I guess it's not that heavy because it's a levitate spell, but there's still a lot of momentum behind it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, as it's just slowly drifting. Pip, you see this, you know, 200 feet away, this massive 15 foot long sword pop up out of the ground and start to float across the Avernon uh, landscape towards the vehicles. And this uh, little spine devil. Um, w- kind of waddling next to Kadam and Calliope as they approach uh, the vehicles. Um, what's what's the plan here, Calliope? Uh, put it up top on top of the demon grinder and lash it there with chains. Okay, so using the uh, finesse of the levitate spell to kind of get it into position. Uh, and levitate lasts for like 10 minutes, I think? 10 minutes, yeah. yeah and so, if I need to re-up it, I'll re-up it. Yeah, so you, you don't. You, you have enough time to um, get those chains lashed onto the sword and you now have this huge uh, six-wheeled de- de- uh, a devilish infernal war machine with a 15-foot long sword strapped to the side of it um, <laughs> missing its its decorative gem in the pommel um, although apparently it was not just decorative um, and yeah, <laughs> and, okay. Uh, you all regroup with the vehicles. Uh, yeah, Pip, you see Calliope climbing into the demon grinder. Is is it is it uh demon grinder like off balance at all? I was I was picturing it up top. Yeah, on top. Like, oh, literally, top. like yeah, yeah like yeah, a yeah. surfboard kind of. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cool. Like, it felt, okay, well, so well, like, the uh, grinder just kind of like sinks under yeah. the weight of it. I think. Um, if if we need to cut off some other bits, we could do that to make room. Uh, hmm. Hey, Pip, I'd like you to meet Old Drop. Old Drop. Oh, I just. Okay, so we, we are. Uh, it's this is a big sword. Yeah, I'll just gonna use it as El Trail for us. Th- this this is old truck point. <laughs> okay. Uh I don't I don't think old truck can carry that sword. He'll work on it. 
Uh, yeah, Ultrock, um, this little spine devil looking up at you. Ultrock once carried that sword. And then looks over at Kadam. And Ultrock will carry that sword again one day. There you go. And I think we can just fill Pip in as we drive on back out of there. Be like, okay. okay, finger, for real this time. <laughs> I'm gonna wag my finger at you, finger. All right, uh, so you are trying to head to Red Ruth's? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, you focus in on, uh, on the finger and direct it towards Red Ruth's. Um, I, I am going to guide the hand. You're going to guide the hand. Hmm. We will see if that makes any difference whatsoever. What does guiding the hand look like? Yeah, what do you do to the hand? I take it in my hand. Like palm to palm. And I stroke the back of it a little bit and say, please work. Please okay. work this time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kazab, go ahead and roll 2d10 for me. I need to know both numbers, not the total. Okay. Uh, a six and a one. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll 2d12 for me. A 12 and a 1. <laughs> okay. Um, and final roll, maybe? Roll, uh, just roll a d20. Natural 20. Okay. Uh, natural 20. Okay. Last time we rolled high and it was bad. Great. So, the vehicles fire up and you take off across the landscape once more, following the angle of the hand. Um, again, travel goes on for quite some time. Many hours pass. Uh, you see all of these strange sights and sounds that you're starting to become familiar with down here in the hells. Uh, at one point during your travel, um, you end up coming upon yeah you you come upon what you thought was a hill as you're approaching it. It is it is so large this this kind of large dark mound in the distance as you're approaching, um, and as you start to kind of veer the vehicles to sort of skirt around this um, large landmass that you're approaching, dark in its coloration, kind of standing out against the reddish landscape. Uh, getting closer and closer to, to it, it is a dark, almost black charcoal color, and you start to realize it is a hill of charred bones, just like thousands of thousands of burnt and charred bones and tucked within you can see remnants and bits of either um, intact at times or completely ruined pieces of like weaponry and equipment that's just kind of poking out of this massive pile of charred bones um, but uh, do you want to stop and look at this landmark or continue along your way and just kind of skirt around it I'm a little curious. I'm a little curious too. And I think we just kind of slow down. Okay. A ways away. Sure. Yeah. Um, you, as you uh, start to slow down, approaching it, um, you. Pip. 
Give me something cool inside. Um, you start to slow down and approach it. Go ahead and uh, you're 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 trying to peer at it and see see what's up. Um, go ahead and just make a perception roll for me as you start to roll up on it. So Kadam, you're seeing the demon grinder sort of peeling off, getting a little close to it, slowing down <laughs> as it goes uh, along the uh, side of bones. <laughs> and slow down to. I got uh, a 13. A 13? I mean, yeah, Calliope, there's some, you can see like there might be some intact items in there. Like you see like, you know, the tip of a halberd sticking out, um, some spear points. Um, so <laughs> there might be stuff in there, but you would definitely have to get in there and dig around. We, we did just find like a 50,000 gold piece, just like bag hanging out in the thorns there. The stuff is lying around, apparently, out, out here. I'm going to do eyes at the grave. Do I detect any undead within 60 feet of us? Sure, so... Um, the uh, radius blasts out, and you don't get any detection of undead. Uh, pip roll to 24 perception. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, with a 24 looking, looking into this pile, um, you notice that, uh, there is, uh, one of these charred remains, like charred skeletons that's sort of buried in about halfway up this bone hill. And you realize that the armor it's wearing is not um tarnished i mean there's like you know stuff like like charcoal kind of smearing it but it doesn't look it doesn't look cooked or damaged um and you're able to spot that from a distance about halfway up the hill oh, oh, oh. Uh, get... uh all right um i think i'm gonna pop in to that creepy bone pile and i'm going to get some armor Okay, we'll we'll watch your back. Um, I'll unfold big dummy, and kind of like mount up. Okay. Um, uh, I think I'm just gonna follow Pip to the base of the bone pile, but like keep some distance. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll just go right up to the base of it. All right. So um, you, uh, yeah, Kadam, you see the the demon grinder come to a stop, and the two of them hop out and start move, making their way towards the hill. You're gonna hop out as well, Kadam. Go and join them. You join up with Calliope here at the base of this hill as Pip starts to climb and scramble up this bone pile. Pip, your um, it is it's kind of slow going going up this hill because it's constantly shifting and moving. And as you're going up and lifting your hands, you're realizing that like your palms and forearms are just getting like completely darkened, like from all the soot. Uh, and you eventually get up to that midpoint and you can see this armor kind of peeking out within the bones. Um, as you approach, um, you kind of hear like some sounds of <laughs> like fluttering and Calliope, Kadam, you see these little like they're not imps. Uh, they they look you haven't seen these before. There's some kind of you suspect just some kind of native fauna to hear these little like winged bat-like creatures with these long kind of proboscis sort of thing poking out of their face and kind of rat-like fur coming off the backs of their heads as these little creatures <laughs> skitter off and fly up into the air. Sturges? They look like they are similar to sturges, yes. Okay. Um, but you see like a little flock of these things kind of get uh, startled and fly away <laughs> off into the air. Um, but you see this armor there, Pip. Um, you you want to pull it out? Yeah. Uh, I, I assume Pip pulls it out and it's kind of like pulling a middle, uh, like an orange out of a <laughs> pile of oranges that have been nicely stacked at the grocery store. <laughs> uh, yes, definitely. Yeah, you, you, pull, you pull it out. And uh, the two of you at the bottom just suddenly watch 
as it <laughs> pops out, uh, still a, a rib cage within, and the skull kind of comes tumbling off. Um, the bu- the arms sort of flop down, and there's just this rib cage like caught in the the armor piece. Um, and you can see some of the other pieces have kind of fallen down that you have to scoop up. But when that main piece pops out, you both just see from above as like a whole <laughs> chunk of the hill just kind of goes and just sort of like falls in on Run itself. Run for it, Pip! Run for it! Uh, yeah, Pip, can you make a dexterity save, a saving throw for me? Okay. Uh, okay, okay. I can do this. This is going to be great. Um, yeah. Dexterity saving throw. Let's see. Oh boy, that's a five. Um, Pip is trying to like surf, surf the body down, and I think is bad at surfing. Uh, Pip, you immediately turn to try to surf and just lose your footing and fall backwards and you just watch as Pip, like quicksand, just (laughs) disappears into bones. Pip, you feel bones just start to (laughs) pile on top of you as this whole little hill, like top part of the hill starts to sort of uh, like an hourglass start to fall down in on you and you start to get sucked into the hill. What do you do? Oh, this is miserable. <laughs> uh, still still just... holding on to, to the armor, whatever it is. You just hear... Uh, just, just like holding it over my head, keeping a little breathing space. Yeah, yeah. Um, you hear, uh, you hear Gargouth um, in the shield on your back go, See, it doesn't feel very good to be trapped, does it? Uh, as these bones start to fall in around you, um, and you're starting to feel pressure build as they start to kind of collapse in on you. Kadam. Can I try to cast Banishment right before I lose sight of Pit? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I really like that. Can we, hmm, go ahead, would you be comfortable, so, because Pip can fail this, so we don't have to worry about the save there, but I think for you to to react, um, I'm thinking just do, like, a spell cast roll, so, like, just roll your, with your wisdom sure. mod, um, to try to hit that, um, hit Pip before, uh, she disappears. 16? Okay, so, Pip... I think, okay, so I think this is what happens. So you do slip in and start to feel the bones falling in all around you. Kadam, you start to cast the spell and manage to hit Pip's toe just as it slips out of sight. And suddenly, Pip, you uh, are... Well, Pip, do you choose to feel the saving throw? Yeah, Uh, Pip, do you... You're feeling a pull home i was about to say yeah uh, oh my god i just realized this is way more complicated but yeah uh pip do you choose to fail the save you probably Can know you it's coming it from is? kadam okay yeah i i i think pip at this point is okay i i, I want a couple things to happen at the same time i think as soon as pip feels uh um that things are starting to collapse inwards, Pip throws down a feather fall, which uh, just breaks open uh, a vial, and it just slows down um, herself and the, or I guess just slows down the, the five bodies that okay. are on top of her. Okay. Uh, and then and starts to feel the hmm? starts to feel the pull from banishment, and uh, covered in foam just says fuck it (laughs) and does it okay so wow um so pip covered in foam as you start to start to slow your fall and you you give in to the the sensation of um kadam's magic there is a sudden drop in your stomach and a rush of air and um brilliant green light (laughs) and within an instant you blink And you hear the sounds of 
hundreds upon hundreds of strange bird calls. There's a sudden in, a moisture and humidity in the air. There is a lushness all around you. There is this beautiful uh, twilight that suffuses everything around you with little um, lightning bugs dancing amongst the lush trees and plants all around you. And you realize that you suddenly are standing somewhere deep within the Feywild. You have been sent home by Kadam. Pip, uh, Pip's mouth just drops up and then she sort of stares around and kind of sinks to her knees and puts her, her hands on the ground, just like digging her fingers into to the the moss and soil it's it's cool it's damp and wet there as you push your hands down into the moss and soil and start to lift them up immediately you see strange little bugs start to crawl out of the soil and skitter away um they have these big almost like palm frond-esque antennae that are pulsing with light as they run away uh it's so utterly different than what you were just standing in. Um, Hip is going to, I think, well, Pip is going to take a look around and see if there's like. Oh no, and you we're we're losing you. Yeah. You're breaking up. <laughs> In the Feywild. In the Feywild. The Feywild is the causing Feywild. connection problems. <laughs> oh no. I have flashback to Kalafi and Kadam. I think Kalafi's like Did you do something? Yep. Did you see him? Yep. Uh we're gonna wait one second, wait till things settle, and then I'll bring her back. Uh, so bring her back from where? Oh. Home, Feywild, I think. <laughs> um, it looks like you're back, Enyo. Maybe it's yeah. Okay, so I, I, I think uh, Pip just like reappears with like tears in her eyes. <laughs> all right, so yeah. Um, Unless you want to, I mean, yes, yeah, Kadam, you you wait for a full. You're gonna wait until just before the minute. Specifically, what I'm waiting for is for the landslide to settle, okay. so that I'm not bringing her back to unstable, being bludgeoned by dead bodies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you wait for. It's honestly, I think it's uncomfortably close. It's probably like approaching forty-five seconds before everything starts to settle down, um, and even when you're approaching that that final bit of minute there's still like a little bit of shifting but it's like more or less stopped um and if you let go pip you are having this moment tears starting to stream down your cheeks feeling the soil getting under your fingernails and in, on your hands and the damp and the cool and that just earthy smell flooding your senses the sound of water somewhere nearby, and then another flash, this time of red and heat, and your stomach drops, and suddenly all of the moisture is gone, your mouth is dry, things taste of ash, and you find yourself, I think because of where you were last, you all see the bones kind of, there's a little like pop, and the bones kind of go sort of like, go up a little bit and Pip you were kind of just laying there n thankfully not deep within this pile just like a, a few bones on top of you and you're able to push out with ease um, with the armor still in hand it was beautiful it was so beautiful I'm sorry I'm sorry. No, don't be. 
I... I didn't think I could ever go back. I thought... I thought they'd kill me if I went back. Do they... Do you think they know I was there? It's... Oh, I got the armor. Thank you. I didn't die. I didn't really see anything else in there. I think we're good here. And uh, Pip kind of just absentmindedly sort of tucks the armor uh, under her arm and just kind of wanders away. Still, still clearly just thinking about the moss and the the water and just sort of sauntering like touching everything <laughs> yeah yeah as uh, Pip saunters down the hill eventually making do you think you could do it again I mean I could sure I can't keep you there more than a minute without leaving you there Right. I guess I guess that's not an option then. But yeah, some evening yeah. if you want to just spend 50 seconds there I can send you to the same place. Maybe it's dangerous having too much access. Maybe it's dangerous even wanting to go back. Thank you for this gift. Or curse, not sure what it is yet. I guess I didn't die. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Hey, Gargalf, did you see it? Yes, I did. Oh, you want to know my opinion? Kind of, yeah. Seemed like a lot of potential. Okay, maybe I don't want to know your opinion. Well, potential for what? You said you didn't want to know my opinion. I see a lot of things and I don't mean most of them. I... I realize that. <sighs> Calliope is I... barely containing herself. You're like... Look, look at the armor. What you got there? <laughs> what you got there? Oh, I don't know. Do you want to look at it? Yes, please. The moss was so soft. I think Clippy has yanked it over to her little workstation and will identify it. Okay. Uh, are you doing identify? Uh, yeah. Pip is going to just like. Yeah. Uh, ritual. Yeah, cast. Pip is just sort of following still very clearly. Yeah. Not not all here. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, you take a little time, identify this armor. Um, this armor is uh, essentially, I mean, it's it's like the infernal version of this, but it's essentially known as glamour studded uh, armor. Um, sorry, gl glamoured studded leather armor. Um, so it is got like uh, kind of infernal runes and designs throughout it. Um, it does give you a plus one bonus to AC, but as a bonus action, you can make the armor look like whatever you want in terms of like 
clothing. So you can make it look like you're not wearing armor while wearing this if you wanted to. You can make it look like something else, uh, like a, a fancy dress thing or whatever. You know, you could like a like uh, rags or something. But um, it has like a, a simple illus illusory enchantment on it that allows you to make the armor look like whatever you want it to look like. So, um, so yeah, it's glamoured studded leather armor. That's fun. But, yeah, that's just fun. So yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if any of you actually use light armor, but um, you know, hey, maybe you can go back to the Emporium again and sell it. <laughs> And find those keepers, I think. Um, and we'll explain that, I guess, to Pip, who's okay. I'm sure only half listening. See, see, like you just you just quiddle this rune here, um, and then that gets into the malleable state, and then you just think really hard about what you want to look like, and it'll adjust. You got that? Well, yes. What does it do? <laughs> um, do Do you want to play this out, or I I I, I think uh, once once Pip actually understands and yeah. is like, y actually, wait, hold on. Are you saying things? You're saying that this is armor that I can make, like any kind of dress that wants. <laughs> without yeah. having to expend a spell slot for it or spend yeah. an hour. I yes, yes, please. That seems dangerous in your hands, and I like it. Uh, it, it also, it does not require attunement, so it, mm -hmm. you can just uh, don this and be fine. Um, awesome. Okay, so with this in hand, um, are you all going to continue on your journey? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I will ask Valor to drive. Yeah, it, no problem. And Valor will jump in and drive. Um, so you're going to continue along. Uh, the journey lasts in total a, about 12 hours, a little more, um, before you see the bone brambles start to appear off in the distance. Um, if you aren't going to do anything else along the way you eventually drive your vehicles up to the bone brambles and uh park your car uh, your two infernal war machines out front seeing the twisted maze-like brambles sprawling out before you with the sound of blood dripping through the trees uh and if you would like to venture in we can just continue along as you all gather up your things. Are you bringing uh, the whole group in to see Red Ruth, Old Rock included? Right. How many things can I fit in my bag? <laughs> can I fit Old Rock in my bag? I don't think you can fit Old Rock in your bag. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think I think we got it. It's okay. So like Red Ruth is gonna like help gather some intel, maybe? Help plan out this heist? You have multiple times mentioned a heist. Who are we heisting? Um, the blood guy. Diamond's champion. Oh, I see. All right. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, sure. We can just bring him the in. This, this sounds like something Red Ruth would be so into. Mm -hmm. Stealing mm -hmm. blood. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. she just has Ooh, some. I wonder if she does. Oh my god, maybe she does. It's worth asking about. Definitely worth asking. She probably wants us to do a side quest. Probably. She does seem very uh, focused on acts of service as a waste of show affection. So, you uh, are having this conversation as you get, gather up Old Drock and your other companions and venture Put into the Put the parking the or lock and break. Uh, on the steering <laughs> wheels out there. Yeah. Um, and delving within, um, no need to make a check this time. You uh, eventually are able to find your way into the heart of the brambles where you can see the hovel that is Red Ruth's 
abode, her lair, um, with all the various bone chimes and um, baubles and charms strewn about the entrance and heading, uh, I guess if you just head inside or announce yourself however you want to do it, um, you eventually make your way inside and uh, see her there at her spot with her uh, pool of blood before her watching you all enter in uh, looking up with a kind of strained smile crossing uh, crossing her wrinkled face you've returned sure enough well seems you were successful Uh, wonderful you can all stay here while I go and enjoy some vampiring. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How, how long? Just, just ballpark. Um, I don't mean to rush you. I know it's going to be your day off. But it, it'd be good to know. Uh, let's see what the blood says today. And she will uh, do a little puncture and let it spill out looks down um, as she assesses it Uh, he should be back within uh, eight hours or less oh wow we'll look over after the place that's easy and remember don't take anything of course not of course not we would never Good. Just make sure everything stays where it is and make sure that uh, nothing happens to my place. Ah, I see you have a new companion with you. Uh, Old Rock has just been kind of in a daze looking around. Knowledge is Red Ruth. Um, but yeah, just seems to kind of be sort of uh, dazed at being not where he's been for who knows how long. Yeah. Some culture shock, probably. All right. Uh, I'll be back. Good luck. And uh, you watch as she stands, and then for a moment, her image sort of shimmers and then just disappears. And you're left with just the sounds of the blood dripping around you. I would love to ritual cast detect magic. Sure. Um, Is she still okay. here? <laughs> <laughs> hey, could, you, could you give me a hand with something? And uh, I think Calliope is going to start pulling out a string and like a series of like little like bells or like little bits of metal mm-hmm. um and just I, I thought we might like you know uh, some alarms just just to know if anybody comes along seems like a reasonable thing to do um, i will start ritually casting alarm <coughs> um just like around i think the perimeter outside it's a 20 foot cube each Casting takes 11 minutes, I guess. Okay. Uh, and you're setting it up outside? Okay. Yeah. And I think can... starting with, like, the windows. Sure. Like, any entrances. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe just actually only covering those. That's probably fine. Yeah. Um, no problem. Um, all right. And then, Kadam, you spend uh, time ritually casting Detect Magic. Um after you finish the ritual while uh, Pip and Calliope are scurrying about setting up alarms all throughout the place, uh, the magic releases. <laughs> um, there's a spattering of magical auras coming all throughout the place. Um, there's, you know, the, the divination aura coming off of the, the blood pool. There's um, 
a lot of necromancy auras coming out of all the various vials and um, bottles that she has throughout the place. Uh, there's faint aura, like much l weaker auras of magic coming off of various strange objects throughout the place. Um, you notice uh, one it looks to be like a, a preserved head um, that is actually remarkably well preserved. It's not like um, desiccated. It's It mm -hmm. looks almost not quite like a gentle repose-esque, but still like kind of waxy. Um, and it has this like luscious five foot long beard that, that like cascades down off the side of this little like table that it's sitting on. Um, could potentially be a dwarven head. Um, there's some uh, magic coming off of what looks to just be an empty jar. The jar is completely empty and it's just resting on uh, one of the shelves, but there's some magic coming off of it. Um, Uh, and f yeah, and that's those are the things that are kind of faintly giving off, uh, like very very faint magic coming off of those objects. Okay, so she's not here as far as my magic can tell. No, yeah, there's no sense of like um, invisible creatures nearby. I okay. also was about to say, um, for this guard duty sort of thing, I've re-infused the Lantern of Revealing awesome. in the Big Dummy's mouth. Cool. So, okay, and and that's... I think Big Dummy's just gonna like yeah, hang out near the door. Uh, so like within, I think like 30 feet of Big Dummy. Anything uh, invisible will show up. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 30 feet. Okay, yeah. Um... Why don't we, um, if you're going to have Big Dummy, like, watching, observing, go ahead and make a perception roll for, for Big Dummy. Yeah. Uh, Big Dummy's perception is, a passive perception is 18. Does that mean? Just roll a perception roll. Whatever the perception that... uh, bonus is. It would be... If the passive is 18, then that's a plus eight to their eight. Yeah. perception. Got it. Yeah. Uh, that's an at one for a nine. Cool, 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 cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, big dummies a, doing great. A little great. bit of like, blood just like splatters in yeah. <laughs> the viewport. It's like, okay, <laughs> red. Um, but the little windshield wipers get stuck. <laughs> so for the alarm, uh, the alarms that you set up, is it just uh, like where exactly are they? Explain uh, like, mm -hmm. like it doesn't uh, have to be super door, precise, but okay. Mm -hmm. Any doors or windows, a Perfect. twenty foot cube around them. Perfect. Um, okay. And the alarms work. I, I've set them up to I think be audible. Mm -hmm. So if a tiny or larger creature touches or enters the warded area, um, that's not any of the people I designate, which is all of us plus Fred Ruth, I guess. Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't designate Red Ruth. It would be nice to know if she's back. Okay. Um, and it produces the hand, sound of a handbell for ten seconds within sixty feet. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. What um. What do you uh, what do you all do as the time starts to pass? You know, an hour goes by. Two hours. I'm gonna pull out my bag of hard candy. Mm -hmm. Stick a lemon drop in my mouth and then stick my head in my bag of Holden. Does okay. it work? Um. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Um, it, I see. It does. It does yes. work. Yes. You cannot. Uh, or no, there's ten minutes there's of ten air. Ten minutes of air. Yeah. So you all see Kadam put a hard candy in, and then boom, suddenly, like, put their head inside this bag. Just and Kadam, yeah, you get this beautiful burst of sweet, sour oh. lemon taste in your mouth. 
I am so happy. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, that's really great. <laughs> oh, I'm very pleased about that. Oh, man. Yeah, Pip sees that and gets very excited and is like, wait, wait. And has to, like, take off one of her boots and is like, okay, okay. <laughs> Red Ruth comes back and just hears this one and backs on her pants. <laughs> yep, we're keeping watch. <laughs> Don't worry, the entire place has alarms on it. Uh, <laughs> wow. Amazing. Um, yeah. I think Clive is just taking a nap in Big Dummy's cockpit. Gotcha. Okay. So Clyde P curls up, takes a nap in the cockpit. Um, Pip, you are, are you as well just sitting there enjoying some snacks with the boot on your head? Oh, uh, I think Pip, Pip just does that just to, to, to verify that what Kadab has discovered is indeed. <laughs> do you have hard uh, candies or do you have something else to taste? Oh, I, um, just like a little like flavor shot of, of like a nice little birch syrup, um, from, uh, prestidigitation. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, slurp that down. It is, the flavor is incredibly intense and, and what you would expect. It does not have the dulled ashy, uh, tinge that everything does down here. Um, Awesome. So you continue to be here as the hours pass. Is there anything that we want to discuss? Is there anything we want to plan? How are, are we just going to ask Red Ruth just if she has any of Tiamat's blood? I mean, do we just ask that? Do we have... Is there any reason not to? <laughs> it would be telling someone else that we're at least involved with Tiamat. What, what but if it's not was... like she couldn't figure it out herself. Exactly. She would just need to think to ask the question, I suppose. I'm okay asking her, I think. We should do that, I think. I definitely can't can't tell what blood is what. I'm oh, happy to the tell same. some things. But yeah, it's worth asking. Uh and then we're asking about uh, why can I not remember her name? It ain't Arabella. Rosala. Yeah, have a free right. hug. And then we go on her quest, I guess. Ah, me. Is there anything else that we want from Red Roof? Well, if she doesn't have the blood. We could ask, like... What... Does uh, 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 Archon really enjoy? Can he be distracted? Is he weak to anything or anyone in particular? Those sorts of questions. Mm. Right, that's good. And his friends, um, the the Tortle and the Minotaur. Is 
There's got to be some way to distract him. Probably. I... I, okay, um, Pip is going to, uh, just also snoop around a bit. I assume that Red Ruth has, like, various, um, like, distilleries and alchemical things as well. Uh, y yes, yes, uh, like, for, for making, uh, the potions, you would find, like, you know, like, mortar pestles and, um, probably... Probably less like Mad Maggie's is more like kind of that approaching like higher tech alchemy stuff, right? Of like glass vials and things like that. This is very much more that, I don't know, druidic, what you would imagine, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. mortar pestles and clay jars and um, more classic witchy stuff, right? Uh, eye of Newt type of shit, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, there's Honestly. there's all 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 kinds of um strange bits and bobs for sure but it does seem like the primary thing uh i would say you without making a check being the artificer track that you're on um subclass you are um the primary thing that she uses to make all of her potions is blood that is definitely the like thing that she relies on well i am out of, of my element here but Unless he... Uh... What are you okay. looking for? I'm not looking for anything in particular. I have an idea, perhaps, that will probably go terribly. I. What do you think... What do you think Stixwater would do to... Somebody like Archon. <laughs> Surely he's uh, he has some sort of resistance. Resistance, perhaps. Immunity? I don't know. That stuff took you out. It did, which is why I'm a little hesitant to actually mess with it now, but... Pip, I think that's a good idea. I I mean I have I have a full vial. I could water it down if necessary, I could distill it, but for somebody like him. So we need to get him to drink something? Or someone. Uh, what, Clyde, you think he's I a guess. vampire? Ah, I mean, yes. Clive, he says, sitting up. I mean, it's gonna, you know, uh, put the slurp on uh, moon color. Oh, do you think given moon color, like a vial or something? I mean, it, it's an inroad, ain't it? That's it the is. thing it is. that we're going to bring him that he's going to consume. Person. Somehow, mm -hmm. yes. This could be a question for Matt Maggie. Yeah. Or, I mean, Red Ruth. Mm, yeah, fair. All right, y'all, I have 12 soul coins left. <laughs> We're going to have to pick our questions carefully here, but we might be able to do it. Clypey, uh, your alarm triggers for everybody, like everybody hears it? Yeah, so it both wakes me up if I am asleep and it makes a ringing noise okay. uh, for everybody, so, audibly. You're in this uh, hut, which is probably like, it's not terribly large. It's like probably a 20 foot diameter type, type of place. Um, 
while you're having this conversation and you kind of are sitting there dwelling on that and Kadam says that there is a sudden piercing sound as one of your alarms goes off. You all spin (laughs) in the direction of the sound and you see almost spider-like crawling down through the window that sort of bleached white elegant kind of form, humanoid form of one of those um, for lack of a better word, I mean for lack of a better word, like almost dryad-esque creatures that you ran into yeah. in here mm-hmm. um, as they sort of spindly climb in through looking around, see you all and they kind of <sighs> hiss at the um, sound of the alarm and spin towards the sound where there's like Um, you know, a collection of shelves next to where that window was, and they let out a, a, like, a kind of shrieking wail and just claw down Uh, at the shelves, shattering a bunch of the jars. (laughs) As they... (laughs) And then spin to look at all of you. Um, You hear another as from behind you crawling through one of the other windows is another one of those creatures. Um, What do you all do in this moment? Calm emotions on everyone. Oh, but they're not, ah, they're not humanoids. Are they? Uh, Calliope scrambles for the controls. It's like, stop! Um, And starts, yeah, moves into attack position. Okay, so you... Uh, okay, so you get into the controls of the of of Big Dummy. Or I'm already <laughs> sitting in the yeah. cockpit. And okay, like, and <laughs> okay, so the 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 lance is is going up. Yeah. Um, Kadam, are you doing calm emotions? Well, they're not humanoids, are they? They're Fey or something. I'm I'm not going to do it. Okay. Clyde, ah. Clyde, are you? Going yeah, in and attacking. I'm gonna be like, whack, whack. okay. Or it's like trying to hit a raccoon with a broom, sort of. So situation. you're you're doing like non-lethal like swats yeah, I at think them. So. Okay. Um, okay. I we can go to that. Uh, I just want to see if Kadam, because Kadam, Kadam said they were gonna do something. If you're gonna do anything, Kadam, otherwise Calliope's. I'm gonna let Calliope go first and just. Move no, in. I think what I do is I like magically reach for calm emotions and like. Yeah, no. and in, in that moment, Calliope, you go running over towards this thing. Um, they immediately rear up at you, and um, I think we're going to have to roll initiative here Yay. because uh, this is two aggressive actions coming towards each other, and we'll see who can react first. Yeah. Uh, all right, let me... I'm so used to watching shows where it's like, and that's where we're going to roll for initiative. And that's well, where we end. But we it, do have seven minutes. Left. We have seven minutes. I think we can maybe do like one round. Yeah. And then end. But let's, hmm, God, we are like so close to the end. We can assemble <laughs> initiative and then. Yeah. Uh, we could do we'll that. Okay. For initiative. Okay. 18. Let me, let me get this in, uh, in position. Ooh, I got a 20. Nice. Okay, I'm going to say, Clyde P, you're dealing with this one. Yeah. Uh, I don't see a map. Are we supposed to see a map? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to bring a map in in just a second here. All right. Um, let me send you over to the map. So I I kind of uh oh, and by the way, the map we're using out the patron that made this map um oh yeah da dum dum mapster (laughs) um (laughs) i found them on reddit uh sorry i've been finding a lot of these maps um i'll post in the chat a link to their page but anyways uh so um yeah i slightly adjust this map to but yeah, it doesn't really matter. Anyways, so here you are in this this hut. Uh, it's a small space right now, but there's obviously all the space outside of it, the kind of warren of, of branches and such. Um, and Calliope, you got an 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see what this 
creature is going to get. Uh, no, yeah, they, they, they will not. You definitely will go before them. Um, turn order. Oh, they changed where everything is. There it is. Okay. All right. Clyde, you got an 18. Kadam? Uh, 19. 19 Valor. Mm. 18 with a plus zero to dex. Wow. 18 with a plus zero to dex. Okay, so I think Calliope goes first. Um, Pip? 20. Nice. Oh, I need to get whole Drock in here. God, I forgot. <laughs> well, instead of... Oh, Lulu got a natural one. Uh, instead of fumbling around to try to get old Rock in for now, I mean, I'll just roll a d20 and see if... Yeah, okay, he's somewhere in the middle. Um, so, Pip, uh, all three of... Actually, all of you get to go before these things react. Um, I think due to the narrative right now, I, would, I, I know that, Pip, you technically go first, but I would like to let Calliope go first because Calliope was yeah. like springing into action. So Calliope, right. um, go ahead. Yeah, you go up to this thing. Lance comes out like a scorpion tail. Uh, what are you doing? Um, I think I think we're going to try to kind of like gra grapple, like ram and grapple them to get them out of here so they stop flailing around sure okay um oh like so you you want to shove them uh or you want to actually grab onto them. Telling where the like doors and stuff are yeah it's like, the windows. map is um it's the the house is hard to see um uh -huh, uh -huh. but yeah it's this little tiny thing here is it the square it's basically yeah this this 15 by 15 foot square and the uh, we'll say that the window is over here, so we'll say you're like there, Calliope, as this thing is trying to climb in. It's like right at the threshold of the window. Okay, um, yeah, then, then a yeah. shove would be perfect, so then I can like move up and like block the entrance. Perfect, okay, so um, let's do some contested rolls. Um, how, did, how does shove work? Make a strength athletics check, and they can do an acrobatics or a strength check to try to avoid it. Well, this is having my using my bonus action to command the sealed defender to make the thing for me. Cool. Um, so athletics is two plus proficiency bonus. Uh, so that's plus six. All right. Fourteen. Uh, that beats it. So it gets shoved out the window and sort of scrambles out onto the ground. Um. And yeah. yeah, I will move up with Big Dummy to kind of like block the window. Okay, um, great. And start yelling, be like, "Go on, get it, scat!" Um, and I will prepare an action to attack. If, uh, one tries to like enter the building. Okay, great. So you've pushed it out, and it <sighs> hisses at you, uh, taking us to Pip. You can see the other one is starting to climb in through the back. Um, and is getting ready to probably wreck more of this place. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Pip is going to um, cast, well, cast Vortex Warp, but I think that um, just for flavor, it's going to be like pulling a special lever on the gun somewhere that sends out okay. like a little magic thing. Uh, uh, how does that work? Vortex warp? Yeah, I used it once uh, okay. to to get Kadam to out. Save me. Yeah. E right. So the the target must succeed on a Constitution saving throw. Okay. So you fire this off. Um, they got an eighteen, so I think is that that's probably Damn. a success. Um, yeah. Do they take like half damage or something? Uh, it's, it's not even a damage thing. I was just trying to get it out. Got it. Okay, so you fire off, and does it create literally, like, a little vortex, uh, somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Okay. So, let's see. And, uh, I guess I, uh, Pip is going to, to just try and get in front 
<laughs> to to uh, make sure that I can't get through at least and okay. break everything. Gotcha. So you go towards the window, fire off. <laughs> Um, this little vortex <laughs> appears behind it, but it is able to hold on and not get pulled away. Um, and you put block the window there, um, taking us to Kadam. Uh, Kadam, you can hear the sounds of like branches creaking and moving and snapping outside of the hut. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going I'm to Paul, come help. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to turn to the one that's right in front of us, mm-hmm. make direct eye contact, and say, run. I would like them to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, uh, that I'm was a command. command. Okay. Uh, let me check. I really think. Uh, is this a charm effect? Uh, I don't know. Let's see here. Or frightened, perhaps? I don't believe It's so. not frightened. Okay. Uh, it says the spell has no effect if the target is undead, if it doesn't understand any languages that I speak, or if I, if the command is directly harmful to it. It has no effect. This Wee. creature okay. looks at you. <sighs> she will pay for what she did. And it had no effect. All right, I have useful information now. I'm done. Okay, uh, taking us to Valor. Valor. Watch the doors. Clappy yells. Yeah, and we'll say the door. Um, here, I'll, I'll I'll draw a little thing on the map. We'll say the door is uh, here. Okay, so this Valor will move up here, and. Bonus action. Um, what's this? What's the, the, the leadership thing. Uh, it's gonna t- shout over her shoulder to Calliope. Okay. Mm-hmm. I always tremble at doing a Russian accent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got the front door. <laughs> you can be right. Get down. the windows. Oh, gosh. It always ends up going Scottish. It's okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> so she said she has the front door. Mm-hmm. Watch the windows. Yeah. Okay. And that gives Calliope. So Calliope, you have, you can add a D4 to all attack rolls and saves for the next minute. Oh, shit. That's amazing. Nice. Um, okay, so uh, she does do that. Does anything with her action? It holds an action. It holds an action. Okay. We'll do a, a, a non-lethal attack. Should anyone come within range? Okay. And this is where we're going to end our stream as the uh, these undead dryads push in towards uh, Red Ruth's home. Oh, and just by the way, for clarity, Kadam, because I don't know if you wanted to move. Um, the, I drew the windows, the little blue things. Yeah, the I see. Windows. Thank you. So if Kadam's going to stay there, that's fine. Yeah. Um, Lulu would have been somewhere in the middle here. She's still, like, she's probably napping, and she's still trying to, like, wake up and, and figure out what's happening. Um, you hear those shifting of um, branches and snapping of twigs as another dryad uh, comes through the window there. <laughs> Like looking the, around action. yeah go ahead you had your held action what do you do uh yeah i'm just gonna stabby stab okay uh, is this lethal um, or non-lethal i think i think it's lethal at this point okay so i think so he's not two attacks go for it um these are just flat but they do get d4s so i'll roll the d4s after if it matters mm-hmm uh, ooh, I think it might. 13 and 15. Do those hit flat, or do I those need to roll some d4s? actually both hit. No? Okay. Um, that is 24 damage. Oh my goodness. Uh, let me see something. And I have a new thing. Is this... Oh your, your weapon is magical, right? 
Yeah, it okay, is. Okay, cool. So it does the 24 damage. Okay. And once per turn, when you hit a target with the magic weapon attack, uh, you choose to either deliver extra 2d6 force damage or heal somebody. Okay. So I'm just going to do an extra 2d6 on top of this 24. Okay. Oh Go for it. Mm -hmm. So that'll be an extra 6 damage. So 30 damage in all. Okay, so two quick strikes at this dryad. Um, she looks around the room. Oh, yeah. And she... This, like, coldness washes over you all. She will pay. She will... And she lets out this horrible wail. Oh, I need no. you all to make con saves. Con saves. Uh, let me see. Is it everyone? Uh, plus yeah. a d4 calliope. Thank you. Thank you for the d4. Uh, 12. Uh, 12 total? I'm gonna flash a genius that, actually. Just for, just for myself. Okay. Uh, so up to 17 for me. Okay. Ah, earplugs. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, all right. So, so a seventeen. Um, Lulu got a thirteen. Uh, what did you get, um, Pip? Sixteen. Sixteen. Uh, Kadam. Nineteen. No, sorry, twenty-one. And Valor. Nine. Okay. So, um, all of you except for Valor are gonna take half. Um. Psychic. Hero's Feast has faded. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Uh, um, um, hold on. Is So is this uh, a spell or a magical effect? This is a... I don't know. This is... Is this magical? I don't know. It's an ability? Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Let me see. Because... Um, I suppose it's magical? Because it's... Oh, you already passed, right? Yeah, I did pass. I, I yeah. realize it doesn't matter. Uh, so you all... Um, are going to take hold on, how does this work? I think you all take 13 points of psychic. Yeah, yeah, so on a success, you take that damage. 13 points of psychic damage. On a failure, Valor drops to zero hit points. Oh my god. Oh my as goodness. this horrible wail <laughs> cuts through the air and you just watch Valor's eyes roll in the back of her head and she just clung clanks to the ground. Um, uh, Calliope, you no longer have that D4. <laughs> um, as the wail resonates throughout the chamber and you are recovering from the blast and sort of stand up and look around, um, all of you start to hear another sound cutting through. Um, I'm going to let the other two dryads go at, uh, the, top of, uh, at the top of the show because what you start to hear is something else pushing through the forest something large you hear this loud <laughs> as what sounds like trees falling and thudding into the ground as something is pushing through in your direction Calliope, you just barely can see out through the door where Valor dropped limp as some massive shape, probably 20 feet tall, is starting to shift and push through the Ooh. forest in the direction of the hut. And you just hear a low rumbling. <sighs> it seems that things in this forest are not happy with Red Ruth. Great. So, Reasonable, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is where we're going to end tonight's session um, as the remaining oh. two dryads are looking around getting ready to strike. You guys want to combat, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thrilled. Uh, Watch man. Valor die again. <laughs> I know. Why is it always Valor? <laughs> she has the most hit points. She has an incredibly high AP. Oh. She has a plus five to her con saves. Uh, oh yeah. Why did she roll to fail on that? She rolled a 
She rolled a three. She has a plus six now to con oh. saves. And she rolled a th uh, wow. She because it was a con save. Yeah, and she rolled this. Wow, man. Well, I was selfish. I flashed a genius myself. It's all right. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, thanks everyone. Um, we'll see you Friday. Hopefully, uh, please join us Friday night for our anniversary stream. Um, where we're going to do a one shot. And then next week we will resume this chaos <laughs> and see what happens. I'm so excited for this one shot. Me too. I, yeah, I'm excited for, for the characters to be revealed. Uh, all right. Good night, everyone. And have a lovely evening. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. Good night.